It's your last chance in 2025 to convert your title from a software developer to an AI engineer. Let's just stop talking about that this job market is broken. It's a senior engineer only job market and the demand for fresh CS grads is at the lowest point and the unemployment is double digit. Let's stop talking about all of that because if you see still clearly the demand for AI engineers, whether you are in San Francisco, Bangalore, London or anywhere else in the US in these cities, it's still at the highest right now. And how many of you actually watching this video rather than just using AI with Cursor, Claude, OpenAI have actually, instead of just using it, integrated in your application as well. And how many of you actually went out there and studied what skill set AI engineers had who got 100 million to $1 billion offer at Meta? And how many of you actually vibe coded apps like these from Antri Karpati, where you take a photo of a text menu and it converts it into beautiful images. These are the right questions you need to ask right now because today in this video, I'm gonna not just give you a roadmap from level zero to level 10 of building your portfolio as an AI developer, but actually to tell you who is an AI developer, why these skills are important and all the tags and skills, you should put it in your tech stack, the frameworks, the applications, so that you can prove that you are not an AI developer from a resume point of view, but from an experience point of view as well. So let's get started, learn these skills in the next 30 days and in the last 90 days, you need to apply as soon as possible and I promise you will start getting responses. But first, who am I to give you advice? Am I even an AI developer? The truth is, First of all, I am in San Francisco right now. Yesterday, we attended this AI developer camp where our team got one of the best in-house award with this Apple gift card. And not just that, this app, which I'll talk about later. At Microsoft, I was using AI. Who is an AI developer, AI engineer? AI engineer is just someone who's using AI. He doesn't, he or she doesn't need to build AI right now. So that's why today I want to decrease the fear you may have about AI engineering because even if the hype is bigger, because if you see the numbers for AI engineering, hiring is still really heavy, especially in SF, but the fear of software engineers to convert themselves is also at the highest. So we will break them down today. But first I want to show you the coolest tech thing I use in my setup, whether I'm shooting podcasts or videos, everywhere I go. The environment is very noisy right now, so that's why I want to show you something here which blew my mind. And that is none other than the audio you are listening to that is coming from this microphone with three-step noise cancellation, especially in this noisy environment. And that is something way less than $100 and that also fits in your pocket in the size of AirPods, you can say. We are especially living in an era where everybody wants to be an influencer and now you can get these creative shots and go far from the camera close to the camera and have this quality microphone for the price point in your pocket and in your and it has these magnetic locks i struggle dropping the microphone on the floor because of it look and it's just clicking in and then i can close it and if we go technical this microphone has three step noise cancellation any sudden noise in the background it handles all of it plus 54 hours of battery life and most importantly my favorite up to 120 decibel of volume customizing and in your minimalistic setup i travel all the time i have filmed so many podcasts already with hollyland's microphone you can check out my mercor ai podcast i use hollyland and it's not just like you know a quality boost for me but it's indispensable in my setup go check out out immediately in the description below. Now let's continue. Right now I have data from seven companies that I'm going to show you how engineers at those companies learned, evolved and built frameworks and what is the tech stack they use to call themselves AI engineers and not just that how I have learned as well five step roadmap and most importantly what is the state of job market right now. All the data comes from pragmatic engineer, great guy, great Great data that is very realistic and one of the most trusted in the industry. So starting with the data from September 2025, the latest greatest data in terms of software engineering, AI engineering, Bay Area tops the data with highest number of job listing and highest number of AI engineering jobs as well. So close to 20% of all jobs indexed are from Bay Area, especially in AI engineering. There's one thing that is crazy in the data that is in the last 12 months, software engineers who are changing jobs is at the highest as well. Tenure has increased. If a senior engineer used to change jobs every three, four years, or even two years, they're staying longer because you know why? Because the layoffs affect the young force 
the most. So for example, this is the layoff chart affecting young people the most who have less experience, who are replaceable, who doesn't have wider range of knowledge in terms of the tech stack. If your knowledge base touches more areas of expertise, then of course you are less replaceable. And right now I'm going to show you something even cooler that the biggest source of engineers coming to Apple, Meta, Google, Microsoft, Amazon, these are the big seven companies touching AI because like Microsoft owns like a lot of open AI. So let's take these companies touching AI and the biggest source that these companies are hiring from is itself number Google, Amazon, Microsoft. So basically what it means is Google engineers might be going to these big seven itself. So the biggest switch happens from big seven to big seven itself, you know, like Google to Microsoft, Microsoft to Google or Google to Meta, Apple, etc. And the next source of great hires for these companies are from you know apple qualcomm tiktok oracle oracle which you, go, you saw it's trying to become one of the biggest data center provider to open ai so that's why it's stock the stock of oracle was skyrocketing and even pragmatic engineer one year ago reported oracle was hiring more engineers than the big seven to reach to the point where it is right now so hiring humans is the key to success. Do not forget that. All right. Now, another thing you need to keep in mind is for AI engineers, remote job has a dip. People prefer you to be in Bay Area, you to be in Seattle. So when I was getting opportunity to work at Meta, they were enforcing that, hey, come to Meta in Seattle or Bay Area because they wanted me in person. And last takeaway is the prediction of 2025 job market that we haven't recovered yet. The job market we had in 2022, 2023, it's still far away from what we can reach in 2025. The projected job growth in tech is 205k jobs, even lower than 2022 or even lower than 2024. So we are not able to recover from the peaks we had after COVID. So that's why you have to be strategic in learning the concepts and actually becoming an AI engineer. Now, let me talk about my key steps that I'm taking. Number one, I showed you the Andre Karpati app of generating a menu. So you, you know that I visit China a lot sometimes. So this is a menu generator. So in China, a lot of menus look like this. You take a picture of it and it gives you images with markers of this is, you know, beef, this is pork. If I, because I don't eat beef or pork, I eat chicken, fish, etc. So if it's chicken, fish, vegetarian, tofu, etc., it can give me a green mark. And if it is chicken or if it's beef, pork, it can give me a red mark. It's a customized solution for my purpose. That is, I'm, I'm building and you create the images with Flux or Nano Banana. So this is a cool app that I'm vibe coding. And this was already built by Andre Karpati in the YC video that I showed. But that app wasn't working for Chinese language. So I was like, I'm going to vibe code app for my use case and I'm gonna make it immediately. With Cloud Code, uh, it's almost done. With two hours, I've coded, but I wanna improve it and it'll be done, ready for my use case in China. So number one thing, every engineer, you, whether you're a software engineer, whether you're a kid, here I saw in hackathon, seven to eight year old kids are able to wipe code. Then why can't you code apps like these, which are simple, which can be just wipe coded? That is the first step in 2025 to start becoming an AI engineer to use AI and to solve your own problem that you can put in your resume. I can put this app in my resume from my China experience. I can put the app we made in the hackathon yesterday that ended. Let me show you something cool I learned about Cursor from these events. So this is my database. I'm going to show you the other code base we worked on. My partner in the hackathon, he taught me a memory bank. So Cursor, Cloud Code, when the project becomes bigger and bigger, you need to actually create multiple dot md dot instead of one readme file you can create multiple dot md files and in the settings you can go to cursor settings and go to all the way bottom in the click plus add rule and you can paste the rule here which i'm going to show you so basically uh, it's called memory bank credit if you just search that you will find it in this link this takes you to where we found it here it has all the rules mentioned for this memory bank so what this memory bank does is so basically you can use it for cursor client root code if you don't want to pay a lot of money for root code client uh, if you want if you don't want to pay money for windsurf or cursor you can use something open source like client and root code and put api key of anthropic chat gpt or free from gemini and just use and wipe code as well basically what it does is it 
actually whenever a cursor is coding or cloud code is coding it is actually writing these files so that you can keep track of what is done and what is not done for example in the last last run of cursor it did these check marks so in the recent changes we have done these 10 features what is what was in the latest one in September 25 it has written so if we have code written week 1 of September week 2 of September or let's say May June July whatever you vibe coded with one line of English which has touched thousands of lines it can create those summaries of each step and add into active context it ha we have a different one for databases we have something called progress which uh, which which tells what is done what is not done and this is all written by cursor itself the AI itself and most importantly system patterns in the system pa patterns it creates an architecture overview as it is expanding. We're using Amazon API integration for shopping, uh, React Native for front-end, uh, Gray Whale for algorithm recommendation. So it creates updates as you go and it's easier to track because like a lot of people don't understand code but they understand English. So whatever you're coding, if it is added in the right place, right read me, you will learn more and you will be able to read English, what features are done, what technicalities are done, what are pending. So this is the overview of memory bank. Uh, you can check out this GitHub page, which I'll link in the description below or just find on Reddit. Now, next step of becoming AI engineer is seeing from the industry. So now I'm going to show you data of seven AI companies, how they hire and how those AI engineers have evolved to become one, because this is a non deterministic field. That means that, you know, there's no set roadmap out there, they try, figure out, and the rule they follow is 80-20. 80% of the product can be built with 20% of the hard work, 20% of wipe coding, you can get 80% of the product working. And some cases, if you're a good engineer, 99% of the product can be built with you know, just 1% of the hard work, just by writing English with cloud code cursor. But majority, 80, 90% of the hard work goes into fine tuning, reducing the latency, making product better, understanding the customer, because that is still engineering. Most of AI engineers are still doing, because AI engineer is just using AI in the best possible way, which they learn by doing. But software engineering is still integral part of their tech stack because they understand the customer and still spend a lot of time in fine tuning it. Most of the companies here, they use their own LLM hosting, AWS. They just don't use API key from ChatGPT or Anthropic. Look at this. This company, Simply Business, uses LLM hosting. Wordsmith using, uses Vector Database, Pinecore, and Augment Code uses Google Cloud. And uh, Elsevier uses AWS Bedrock. And a lot of companies are using AWS Bedrock. Do you know why? Because they want a private, private LLM endpoint where customers' personal data is not used for training. Data privacy is important. With AWS Bedrock, you can configure privacy and you can make sure that the data is going to AWS for you know, for database, but it's not going to the LLM provider, which is Anthropic, or maybe it is OpenAI or maybe it is DeepSeek, it's not going to the LLM provider to train the AI and privacy, customer privacy is important. So they have chosen this tech stack. Number two thing is a lot of these companies use different models. This company is using Anthropic. This is using, you know, uh, uh, this, is, this, this is using Cohere, uh, which is from Canada. Uh, this company is using, this company is using Langchain. Some companies are without any framework, just using AI directly. So all of these companies are tried trying and testing what works for them. So let me tell you, you can call API of OpenAI directly, but first step is try to privately host it on AWS. Number two step that do not use Langchain if you don't need it. Langchain, these frameworks such as Langchain, Langsmith, Llama Index, it takes time to learn. According to Pragmatic Engineer, all the experiences provided by the engineers, they mention that sometimes when your solution becomes more and more complicated, Wasting time in learning frameworks like Llama Index, Langchain, it's it's a big waste of time. Just calling API on your own, chaining it, just using their own agentic tools, just not using framework to chain those calls is actually sometimes best because you have more control. So a lot of companies in the list provided by Pragmatic Engineer are actually creating their own own chaining pattern like look at this like this company uses Langchain but most of the companies here do not look at this augment code they have their own way how they are chaining the prompts and for hardware some people are like training their own uh, LLM they're using NVIDIA GPUs and they require NVIDIA CUDA knowledge or 
Python, PyTorch, but some companies which are just using AI directly, they don't. For example, DSI, it, it doesn't require you to have like knowledge about CUDA, PyTorch, you just need to call the API endpoint situated at AWS Bedrock. It is very straightforward. Some of the other learnings that I learned from Pragmatic Engineers blog was okay to overfit to relatively small set of high quality evals and small set of problems. It's okay that your solution is working only for small set of problems in the beginning because one magical use case which blows mind is more important than five average features. So just figure, figure out one problem you wanna solve and do it to the best possible level. Number two learning is design your own AI products to cater failure from the start. Rather than using frameworks like Langchain, Llama Index, just designing your own AI products could be a better solution and you learn more this way as well and you have more control. And number three, most important, collaborate as much as possible. Don't think that this person doesn't know your tech set. For example, in Google, the company that made uh, Gemma, Gemma model, the company that is working on robotics as well, company that is using, making chips as well, all three collaborate as one team many times, even though they could be different, different teams of chips, LLM and robotics. So, you know, Physical AI, chips, and LLM, all three can be different teams, but they collaborate, build together like an ecosystem like Apple. So collaborating people with different experiences, thinking, oh, they are very high level or they know more or less, don't be shy, collaborate as much as possible. In our hackathon team, we collaborated with five people, learned so much, it was one of the biggest weekend of my life and collaborating as much as possible is needed. When you join company, collaboration is the key. And next biggest thing is cost. So a lot of these companies are using AWS Bedrock also because of cost. Sometimes it is cheaper to use on AWS Bedrock or use on open router as compared to just taking API key from Claude. So whenever you're building, when you've reached to a point that, you know, you are getting X, Y, Z cost, it is important that you actually consider how you can reduce as well because every company wants most efficient products and at the cheapest price. So if you can handle both of these after building the product, reduce it. Let's say you wipe coded apps like mine, like menu generation or like uh, clothing using AI. So figure out how much you're paying, write in your resume how much you're paying, how much efficient it is, and then reduce it as well. And that roadmap is good enough for 99% of you to become an AI engineer. Use AI, make it efficient, and make it cheaper. Go out there, start building, go wipe code, and do not forget to check out the Hollyland microphone in the description below. I use it for podcasts and videos, so portable, and thank you so much for watching.